Hello everyone. In this video, we will start with a course on fluid mechanics. So basically, the fluid mechanics comprises of number of chapters. In the first chapter, we talk about introduction. In the second chapter, we talk about fluid statics. In third chapter, we talk about fluid kinematics. In the fourth chapter, we talk about fluid dynamics of inviscid flows. And in the next chapter, we talk about fluid dynamics of viscous flows. Also, we take into consideration the case of internal flows and the case of external flows. Apart from that, we also study the flow measuring devices such as venturi meter, orifice meter and nozzles. So in this video, we will talk about the basics of the fluid mechanics or basic properties of the fluid mechanics as an introductory part. So let's start the course. So regarding the objectives of the first chapter in this the first objective is to develop an understanding about the basics of fluid mechanics and different flow properties. Also, we will recognize the different application areas of fluid mechanics. Then in this chapter, we will discuss the different types of fluid flow conditions. We will have an understanding of the concept of continuum. We will also gain knowledge about the Newton's law of viscosity and develop an understanding about Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids. We will also understand the concept of surface tension and capillarity. Finally, we will have solved some numerical problems on Newton's law of viscosity, capillarity and surface tension. So as far as this lecture is concerned, we will only cover the two first two objectives. So before we talk about fluid mechanics, it is important to understand what is mechanics, which is a prerequisite uh, to the fluid mechanics. Mechanics is a branch of science which deals with the effects of forces on moving and stationary objects. So mechanics, as you know, is classified into statics, kinematics and dynamics. In statics, uh, we deal with the bodies which are at rest. And in kinematics, we take into consideration the bodies which are in motion without considering the cause of motion. And in dynamics, we take into consideration the motion as well as the cause of motion. And in general, the cause of motion is the force which is applied to a body. So fluid mechanics specifically deals with uh, the fluids, behavior of fluids. It may be a liquid or maybe a gas which is in motion or at rest. So in a similar way, as was the case with the mechanics, the fluid mechanics is classified into fluid statics, fluid kinematics and dynamics. So in the coming chapters, we will discuss about fluid statics. So now we will talk about the basic definition of a fluid. So fluid is basically a continuously deforming substance under the influence of a applied shear stress. So we have a figure over here. So uh, we need to understand uh, this figure first. We have a solid surface and we have a fixed plate at the bottom and there is another plate at the top. So what we are we are trying to apply some shear stress on this plate. So what we can see is that there is some deformation and the solid has deformed by an angle theta and this red color line is the con contact area which is in contact with the moving plate which is moving in this direction. 
so on the application of a shear stress we can see that there is a deformation so when we release the load this deformation will not be there the solid body will tend to regain its original shape so in case of a solid on the application of a load solids undergo definite deformation and fluids undergo continuous deformation by definite deformation means when the load will be re removed the solid may or may not regain its original shape so on the removal of the loads solid may or may not regain their original shape under that we have two categories that in some cases solid may regain their original shape completely if the load is allied applied within the elastic limits what do you mean by elastic limit uh, in strength of materials you will come to know about this term elastic limit so when you apply the load on a solid body and when there is only elastic deformation suppose we have a rubber you apply some stress on the rubber so on the removal of the load it will regain its original shape so when we apply the load beyond the elastic limits there may be some deformation so in that case solids partly retain their shape if we if the load is applied beyond the elastic limits but but there will be a definite deformation in case of solids so this blue color solid will have only a definite deformation and if the, the deformation is there that will be uh, measured in terms of theta and it is uh, you know uh, it is due to the shear stress which is applied on a particular area but this is not the case with the fluids fluids will not regain their shape and will tend to flow continuously so in case of uh, solids the stress is proportional to the definite deformation basically you are applying some stress that stress will be proportional to the deformation that will act in this solid and it is definite means that that it has some value so definite deformation is also called as a strain so stress will be proportional to strain that is the case of a solid mechanics but whereas in case of fluid the stress is proportional to the continuous deformation because unlike solids fluids do not have a definition a definite deformation they go on continuously deforming they are the continuously deforming substances under the application of the load so in case of a fluids the stress is proportional to continuous deformation and continuous deformation me means with respect to time the strain is occurring so we call it as a rate of strain or strain rate so in fluids stress is proportional to strain rate so a fluid can be considered as a zero memory substance zero memory substance means that fluid forgets what was its original shape and it never tends to regain its original shape because of its properties whether the load is applied in the elastic limits or in plastic limits fluids have nothing to do with that so leaving except the viscoelastic fluids all the fluids are zero memory substance and they go on deforming continuously on the application of a on the application of the load so this is basically uh, the basic difference between the solids and the liquid uh, fluids wherein the solids have a definite deformation stress is proportional to strain and in fluids the deformation is continuous the stress is proportional to strain rate or rate of strain so if the uh, applied stress is the shear stress it is in the tangential direction so we can call it as a shear stress is direct, directly proportional to the rate of shear strain rate of shear strain so before we move ahead we will talk about the types of stresses in a fluid so we have a plane surface we have taken into consideration an area and there is small area da on it so we are considering a fluid element area da so the force is acting on that area da is shown over this arrow so this is a force which is acting on the fluid element over here so the force which will be normal to this area 
will be called as a normal force and will be denoted by Fn and there is another force which will be parallel to the sur surface area we call it as a tangential force and since it causes shear stress so we denote it by Fs subscript S is used because of the shear behavior so uh, the stress can be defined as a force which is acting on the unit area so force divided by area will give you the stress so normal stress is basically the component of the force if it is if we are taking the normal component of the force since we have the a uh, we have the force f which is resolved into two components normal component which is normal to the area and the parallel component which is tangential to the uh, tangential component which is parallel to the area of this so the shear stress will be the component which will be along the shear plane or which will be along the tangential direction so the force and tangential force divided by the unit area will give you the shear stress so stress and pressure they are all almost same the normal stress in if the fluid is at rest because in case of a stress there can be a motion so but if there is no motion if you're talking about the stress which is in the conditions when the fluid is at rest so we call it as a pressure so the uh, uh, the pressure is equals to is equals to stre stress and it is basically the force per unit area and its unit is newton per meter square another case is there zero shear stress when the fluid is at rest it is called as the state of zero shear stress because whenever the fluid will be in rest there will be no motion between the layers that we will discuss in the coming slides so there will be no motion when there will be no motion there will be no shear force and when there is no shear force which means the stress in the shear in the tangential direction is zero and we call it as a zero shear stress so when the fluid is addressed shear stress is zero and the stress is only due to the normal component of the force that is pressure so when we talk about the uh, fluids when which are at rest or fluid statics the tangential force will not be zero because there is no motion and there will be no tangential force so the force or the, st uh, the stress will only be due to the pressure which will be in the normal direction so coming towards the basic properties of a fluid uh, these are basically the characteristics which have nothing to do with the fluid motion so these are independent of the fluid motion so these are the four important properties that is the density specific volume specific weight specific gravity so as we know density is basically the amount of fluid contained in a given volume and denoted by rho and it is mass per unit volume mass of the fluid element and volume of the fluid element so uh, specific volume is the inverse of density or we can say it is volume per unit mass of the fluid element and the specific weight is weight per, per unit volume of the fluid the next uh, property is specific gravity it is basically the ratio of the density of a fluid to the density of some standard fluid and the density of the standard fluid uh, or the standard fluid we take into consideration is the water and that is at a uh, four degrees Celsius so uh, these are the four basic properties of the fluid which are independent of the fluid motion so when we uh, talk about the specific gravity of the mercury it is 13.6 so basically specific gravity is what it is the ratio of density of a fluid to the density of the standard fluid so 13.6 means uh, um, specific gravity of 13.6 means that uh, the mercury is 13.6 times heavier than water or denser than water so uh, this is uh, the standard value that specific gravity of the mercury is 13.6 so uh, specific gravity has no units because uh, the density is being divided by the density so it will have uh, no units whereas density a specific volume and specific weight have dimensions so important point is there that, that that the density of the fluid decreases with the increase in temperature so um, when you increase the temperature the fluid uh, will have lesser density in comparison to the cooler fluids but except for water which has a maximum density at 4 degree celsius
so we have a table uh, which will give us the values of the specific gravity of some substances at, at room temperature or you can say at 20 degrees celsius and at one uh, atmospheric pressure so we have different substances water blood sea water gasoline ethyl alcohol mercury uh, balsa wood dense oak wood gold bones ice or air so basically the important property uh, important uh, specific gravity uh, is there uh, of these substances the important one are water blood and air these are the important uh, substances and specific gravity of water is one that should be kept in mind at 20 degrees celsius and at one atmospheric pressure the specific gravity of water is one whereas the specific gravity of the air is 0 0.001204 which means that the air is less denser or less in weight in comparison to the water so before uh, moving ahead coming towards the application areas of uh, fluid mechanics so fluid mechanics has numerous applications so important one are natural processes wherein uh, the flow in rivers wind rise of water in plants due to capillary action and rain cycle can be taken into consideration secondly in human body itself uh, the oxygen intake which we uh, take uh, is basically on the concept of fluid mechanics uh, the dialysis system wherein the blood is circulated by a blood circulating unit so in case of uh, human body also the fluid mechanics concepts are applied in flow measuring devices wherein we measure the pressure and velocity of uh, flow then flow control devices such as valves which are used uh, you can see in your household plumbing domestic plumbing systems where the valves are used as a flow control devices there are also the fluid mechanics concepts are applied pumping system for water supply the pumps which are installed at your uh, home uh, also uses the concept of the fluid mechanics then oil, oil and gas pipelines different power plants to generate the power in hydropower plants the fluid is used uh, to run the turbine whereas in thermal and nuclear power plants the steam is used to run these power plants and also uh, there are different arrangements wherein the fluid can be used in these power plants likewise in cooling systems in other cases it is also used so another is imparting energy to the fluid where if you want to impart the energy that can also be imparted by means of the pumps then fluid energy transmission devices you might have observed uh, the hydraulic brake in your cars or in your uh, vehicles so in that case also uh, the energy of the fluid is used to apply the braking action so same is the case with the fluid coupling hydraulic lift hydraulic ram where in the energy of the fluid is, is used to transmit uh, energy or to apply some braking action or some uh, required action then hydraulic structures you might have observed the dams reservoirs canals they also work under under the concept of the fluid mechanics then comes the aerodynamics you might have observed uh, the birds flying in the air airplanes submarines in uh, in, in in water in oceans so uh, there also the concepts of the fluid mechanics are utilized and it un comes under the purview of fluid mechanics then environmental studies um, which we perform they, these also comes under the purview of the fluid mechanics so these are basically the broad application areas of the fluid mechanics so i i may not have covered all all the application areas but i have tried to so these are the books which were basically consulted so i thank you very much for watching this video in this video we discussed uh, the concept of fluid, basic fluid properties, and the application areas of the fluid mechanics. So in the next video, we will move ahead and we will discuss the different types of flows. So till then, I take your leave. Thank you very much.